Hey, what's up guys? Caleb here from Ellsworth Razors. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a couple first impressions for you today. The first up is this right here. That is Cerberus Fougere by House of Mammoth, Noble Otter, and Declaration Grooming. And I'm also going to be taking a look at the Homelike Start Stainless Steel Razor and um, just working with my matte white Evo from Grizzly Bay. Okay, so let's talk about the Cerberus Fougere first. So this is a collaboration by, you can see right here on the cover, we've got House of Mammoth, Noble Otter, and I guess this buffalo is meant to represent Declaration Gloomy. Um, House of Mammoth and Noble Otter are two of my favorite soap bases and soap makers. Their bases are awesome, their fragrances are awesome. I have a couple Declaration Grooming ones. I know they're kind of OG, but um, they're actually, so far haven't been up there in my top sort of uh, soap bases. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, I'm not sure who was responsible for what in the team up. I know that the soap is in the Declaration Grooming Milk Steak base, and it looks like the Declaration Grooming tub. So I'm going to assume that the base was Decoration Grooming. I can also see that um, Noble Otter is the only name on the splash. So I wanna say that Noble Otter was responsible for that, um, which means House of Mammoth on the fragrance, which makes sense to me because House of Mammoth uh, is known for doing really good sort of dark fragrances. And that is how Cerberus Fougere is described. Basically, the notion is like, um, you know, Cerberus is a mythological beast that comes from the underworld. And the idea is that this beast has escaped the underworld and made a home in the dense jungle forest floor. Um, it's described as being dark, resinous, floral, or not floral, uh, green fragrance. And I would agree with that so far um, off the tub. It smelled a little bit more on the cologne side. We, you know, definitely green and definitely dark, but had more of a cologne sort of um, take to it that was lightening it up. On the face though, it definitely, that dark resinous quality certainly came through. The Scent notes on it start off with a little bit lighter notes with apricot and anise, moving to some floral notes with Egyptian geranium, lavender, a couple of lighter spices with clove and nutmeg, I believe. And then it moves down into sort of the base, the heart, which are those darker resinous notes. I think those notes were, I want to say lab. Ooh. I think I just got myself there on the jaw. Labdenum, I wanna say labdenum, um, need to pay attention here. It's a new razor for me. And I've been kind of on autopilot lately, but yes, there was labdenum, oponax, a couple of wood notes with black hemlock, and there's a balsam fir in there. Then we start getting into some more traditional green base notes. We have patchouli, vetiver, there's a couple other ones which are escaping me right now and I know there is a green moss accord as well. Maybe that was it, patchouli, vetiver, and then green moss accord. Oh and then there was um cardamom as well. The cardamom was probably adding to that sort of cologne vibe. Um, but yeah, definitely all of those other ones, the black hemlock, the open axe, balsam fir, and the green moss accord. They definitely give it a really nice dark sort of green fragrance. So I think all of those Descriptions are spot on. All right, now let's talk about this home-like start in satin. So this is a CNC stainless 
316 uh, stainless razor made by Home Like Razors out of Russia. Uh, it's a very good price coming from Russia for a CNC'd non-mass produced stainless steel razor. I think it retails for about $90 US. Maybe about 115 Canadian. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to get one nowadays with everything that's been going on with Russia and the Ukraine. So if you do want to pick one up, you may need to wait on that. I got this one a while ago. Um, and, you know, this actually isn't my first time using it. I used it once before, but it was a very long time ago. And um, just the one time. So I will call this a renewed sort of first impression. The weight on this razor is 105 grams, a little bit heavier than, you know, the standard for a CNC razor. Is a standard three and a half inch long handle. And the blade gap is 0 0.90 millimeters. So that's a high medium. It's not like the highest of the high above one millimeter, but you know, it's about 0.2 millimeters of uh, larger of a blade gap than the carved B plate, for instance, or the Jacant. And so that's, that's reasonably large. I did nick myself going over the jaw there while I was talking, just because I've been so used to the kind of ease of shading with the Dracon that I was a little bit on autopilot and I forgot that I was using a new razor with an unfamiliar angle and a larger blade gap. But apart from that little kind of mix up, it's been going pretty good so far. It's pretty easy and intuitive to use. I'm using a second use Gillette silver blue blade in here. And it's, it's going pretty efficient, I would say. I guess it should for being 0.2 millimeters larger exposure than some of my more go-to razors like the Tatara Masamune or my own Dracant, the Overlander. That's kind of my wheelhouse for razors. This one is admittedly a higher blade gap. So I would expect it to be a little more efficient. We'll see how it goes after the shave, but so far so good. It is a satin finish, very similar to the satin on the Dracant razor. So, uh, what else has been going on? The Dracons are now officially sold out. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, everybody. Anyone who supported, shared, anyone who picked one up either in the pre-sale or since launch. Basically everyone, just thank you so much for being awesome and helping make that launch a success. Uh, you know, we're, we're overjoyed and we already have some more exciting stuff in the works. We also have more razors in the pipe already. Hopefully we can get those within the next four to six weeks. Some things we're looking into, things that we're considering. We're looking at uh, other materials. We're looking at a brush. Um, Actually, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, a razor stand. A lot of people have asked about razor stands. Different lengths of handles because some people have different sized hands and whatnot. Um, a lot of stuff to look into there.
Oh, and uh, of course the heavy plate for those who want a bit more than that 0.73 millimeter efficiency. So yeah, lots of stuff going on. Um, very excited and we're just, you know, really humbled and, you know, over the moon that it's been well received and that people seem to be really enjoying it by and large. It's just, uh, <laughs> if you'd asked me a year ago if that's what I'd be doing now, I would not have believed you. Um, was on an interesting impromptu live last night. I was just sitting at my desk having a drink and uh, doing some work, some day job work, like some work work. And then uh, Latherhog, John, just went live randomly. And so I was like, oh, what's this about? And he's actually, uh, he's been doing like kind of a, a long form review of the Dracon. He, I sent him one to test um, and then he actually just decided to buy it because he was enjoying it. So he bought it and kept it. And he's doing a longer fork, form kind of review and Razor Spotlight. So I thought maybe he might be talking about it or doing a live shave or something. Turns out, He was just doing a random impromptu live and then he invited people to come on and answer questions. And so uh, Matt Fox, Foxy Matt, was on first. And then I joined in and then it was the three of us for a while, me, John Latherhog and Foxy Matt. And then John Sloppy Badger joined in and uh, we pretty much closed out the show. I don't know how long it was, it felt like at least like an hour and a half or something. But it was a real fun time. It was really cool to meet uh, John Sloppy Badger. We chat a lot, you know, just back and forth in the in the DMs and whatnot and in, in the chats for the other live shows. But I've never video chatted with him. It was just really fun. He's a fun guy. Fun guy in the chats, also fun guy in the videos. So it was a, it was a really good time. Okay, let's do this uh, Noble Otter Cerberus Fougere Splash. Let's see if the scent notes align um, with the soap or, you know, if they're the same scent notes or if they're different, kind of round out the experience. Mmm. Very dark and resinous. Definitely a lot of similar notes. It has a very similar sort of feeling, very similar sort of journey. I think I got some in my mouth there too. It doesn't taste as bad as you think it would with that, that fragrance profile, but yeah. Yeah, I would say they're pretty similar, pretty on point. Uh, it really has that dark resinous green sort of fragrance. So, I mean, it's a hit for me, big hit for me. I like dark. Um, I like sort of that kind of resinous stuff. It's It's got that resinous sort of spicy, uh, green, dark green vibe to it. So, you know, if that kind of dark, really green, mossy, uh, foresty sort of fragrance isn't for you, then maybe this won't be for you. But this is, you know, it's a banger for me and it's a win for me, definitely. Um, I didn't talk about the price point on it. This is a little ex more expensive than average. You know, if a Noble Otter or something is normally around 20, US, I think this is about 26, uh, pushing up into the 30 range for Canadian. But I mean, with these three makers together for a collaboration, um, you would expect something like that. Still, I'd say great value for what you're getting here. Uh, now let's talk about the razor. So um, I did nick myself a couple times once over going over the jaw here, but that's closed up already. A tiny little weeper, I think in the first pass over here on my, or maybe here on my chin. And then I got, like one that was bleeding pretty good down here on my neck. And I have no idea how I did that. I'm gonna have to watch the replay because I didn't feel it happen. And then it just started like bleeding out of nowhere. Um, but I would say, you know, for for a, a brand new razor with a larger gap than what I'm used to, a different angle than what I've been using, uh, it fared pretty well. And you know, I'm not all cut up. I, It's, you know, it's not raw, it's not rough or anything. Um, I use the in, be, in between takes I use the um, the Allen block and I got, you know, a little bit of feedback in places and stuff, but it just, it's like average feedback. It wasn't like screaming or anything like that. 
and um, overall pretty good, pretty smooth, pretty efficient. I missed a couple spots here and there, but um, especially my treble spots, I would say it's less efficient than what I'm used to with like uh, a race that I'm more comfortable with, like the Dracant or maybe the, the Overlander. But I'm gonna chalk that up to this being my first time and needing to kind of get used to this razor in particular before I dial it in. I imagine that I'll be able to get some really nice shaves out of this guy going forward. And again, for $90 US, uh, 115 Canadian or whatever for a CNC stainless razor, it came in beautiful packaging too. You can't really go wrong with that. It's a very nice looking razor, like really cool pattern on the handle, really nice cap design. The cap kind of reminds me of like a, an Overlander or maybe a Blute or something like that. Um, so yeah, nice razor, nice shave, nice fragrance uh, all around. It was pretty darn enjoyable. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button, give me a follow, you know the drill, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video.